Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this uh, rather special um, short uh, webinar um, outlining the hot topics for relationship managers. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, changes over the last few months uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic, and this webinar will outline um, some of those hot topics that you can discuss with your customers. Um, my name is Paul Samra, uh, one of the general practice partners based at Moore Kingston Smith, and I'm joined by Dan Lehman, our corporate finance director, um, who will uh, be discussing strategic reviews and other issues surrounding businesses. So without any further ado, let's uh, get into the uh, short slide presentation. So the topics that we're going to um, discuss, um, exiting the business, um, some tax planning ideas, and just to be mindful of what issues are coming down the track um, as we head into 2021. Um, Brexit, the implications of potential no deal, um, although it is looking a bit more positive at the moment, but things can change as we know. And then Dan will pick up on the reviewing and restructuring. Okay, um, exiting the business. Now, um, up until March of 2020, this year, uh, entrepreneurs relief was the big carrot for entrepreneurs. Everyone had a £10 million lifetime uh, allowance um, on disposal of businesses, and you could dispose of multiple businesses. Well, um, when the Chancellor Rishi Sunak stood up in the House of Commons on the 11th of March, he reduced that to £1 million um, as the lifetime limit. And uh, Entrepreneurs' Relief was rebadged as Business Asset Disposal Relief. And uh, the implications are that, obviously, if you are a serial entrepreneur, um, you're only going to get your first million pounds worth of gains being taxed at 10%. Uh, anything over the million in your lifetime will be taxed at 20%. Um, not too heavy a, a difference, um, but be mindful that the Chancellor, as we know, is looking closely at capital gains tax and will be announcing, no doubt, in the budget in um, early next year, in the spring of next year, what changes he will be bringing about to capital gains tax, and in particular, the rates of capital gains tax. But at the moment, we're in at 20% um, over £1 million. Pounds. And then we're looking at some tax planning and the topics to um, mention to customers um, can include, this isn't an exhaustive list by any means, uh, but certainly during the COVID pandemic, um, businesses have seen their profits tumble and uh, losses um, starting to come to the surface. And what we're suggesting is the potential to change the company's year end, the business year end, to accelerate um, loss relief claims. Um, and in particular, it might be appropriate um, to help reduce any corporation tax bill with those losses um, over an extended period or an abbreviated period, something to look out for. Time to pay arrangements, um, certainly with any income tax or corporation tax, do discuss with the customers what arrangements they've got in place um, and has their cash flow been updated to take account of those arrangements. Capital allowances is a very big um, item here um, in the sense that the reliefs are quite extensive. Um, later on, we talk about the annual investment allowance uh, that is presently at £1 million, but with effect from 1st of January, that goes down to £200,000. But generally, investment in plant and machinery uh, and structures um, do make sure that your customers have maximised uh, those capital allowances claims. Um, certainly, if they've taken over a building in recent years, um, have they accounted for all the possible um, capital allowance claims that could be made on the items within the building. And also innovative work. R research and development tax reliefs are commonplace now in the most extraordinary areas you would never have thought. But certainly any blue sky development 
would qualify for R&D tax reliefs, which can enable a tax refund to be made. So do give due consideration for any innovative work being carried out within the business. I mentioned the annual investment allowance, um, but moving on from that, taking out income from the company by the owners and the proprietors of the business. Is it being done in an efficient way, um, tax efficient way? Yes, salary. What about pension? What about dividend? Have you got an overdrawn loan account? Where is the loan account um, positioned? If it is in credit, you should be drawing down on that loan account before taking any salary to minimize any tax uh, payments out. So do look at get your customers to look at whether or not they are extracting income in a tax efficient way. Small amounts of beer here, six pounds a week, you can reimburse your employees for working from home. There is no tax charge on that, um, but you can get out an extra six pounds a week to individuals for working from home. And also you can reimburse them for any equipment that they're um, have been purchased for their use at home exclusively for work purposes. Uh, Rishi Sunak announced um, last month that the budget would not happen in November and the next budget is anticipated to be in March 2021 and that's when the full impact of what's gone on will, uh, will come to pass on the financial um, reckoning. Coming down the track and things to be aware of as we head into the autumn and, and winter, uh, January 2021. This is a big date for monies uh, going to the HMRC uh, in respect of personal tax liabilities. Remember, the second payment on account, which was originally due 31st of July uh, this year, um, that's when it has been demanded to be paid. Um, but uh, in the recent um, autumn statement that the Chancellor, the winter statement that the Chancellor um, uh, stated to the House, this can now be settled interest free over a further 12 months. So in red, that's what's happened recently. Um, so look out on cash flow forecast for accounting for that second payment on account being spread over a further 12 months. Or, of course, your customers could pay that um, up front. They may have already done so. But if they uh, want to choose to so do, they can actually pay it on 31st of January 2021. The balance of 1920 still has to be paid on the 31st of January 21. And of course, the first payment on account for the following tax year. And of course, mindful of the fact that if your profits have been lower during the COVID period, then of course, that first payment on account can be reduced. 5th of April. Um, is the deferred VAT from that quarter, the second quarter of 2020 uh, that wasn't paid, um, that was deferred and uh, can now be settled over 11 interest free months. Um, again, that was the date, 5th of April 21 was the original date for payment of that deferred liability. Um, but again, that's been uh, extended that it can be settled over 11 months. One year on, look out for interest on C bills and repayments as well. Uh, business rates holiday will end. So these payments have all got to be accounted for within a cash flow uh, forecast. And of course, HP, higher purchase and rent arrears will the um, cumulative um, uh, postponed payments may well need to be included in a cash flow forecast going forward. And then the big thing heading down the track at a rate of knots, uh, Brexit. Um, yes, there's been talk of, of maybe no deal will uh, be scotched and a trade deal will be um, uh, presented to Parliament. Um, just be aware, though, that um, in the case of a no deal, there will be tariffs. Um, and uh, the UK has published the tariffs that are to be followed. Um, various measures that businesses should be taking if they import or export and regardless of whether or not a deal is agreed or not the issue is that customs declarations will be due on every import and export so if you haven't 
got in place procedures for preparing the customs declarations for EU 27 imports exports do um, look to get the expertise on board there are grants available um, HMRC website has details um, but certainly if you presently export to outside the EU or import you'll be well aware of what is what is needed but just be aware that if your volumes of imports and exports are significant uh, the paperwork will also be significant um, watch out for your contracts and whether or not there are any penalties for late delivery times because there will be delays at ports we know we are expecting delays at ports and therefore delivery of goods which could set off delays within the supply chain are going to have a, a manifest significant um, impact on your business uh, people the settlement scheme is in place so be aware of your staff and their families and whether or not they have the right to settled status and you can apply now for any EU 27 employees to get pre-settled status or settled status. Further information is available on our website. Um, the, uh, just click on the Brexit hub on the landing page of our MKS website. But certainly Brexit, a lot of changes ahead, regardless of whether or not uh, we do end up with a deal. Um, and they'll be significant and they'll be time consuming and they will be costly. So that's what's coming up. Um, over to Dan. Thank you, Paul. Um, hi, I'm Dan Lehman, a director in our corporate finance team specializing in mergers and acquisitions and providing strategic advice to both growing businesses and turnaround situations. As well as 12 years experience, I have eight years experience as a CFO client side, managing both growth and turnaround situations within businesses. And I'd like to talk to you today about our approach when we help a client um, that is currently facing a difficult trading situation and planning a turnaround. So, uh, it's essentially a four-stage process where we start by looking at situa the situation the business is in. Then we try and identify what a sustainable business model will be for a lower level of income. We model through that, getting from the current situation to the sustainable business model and quantify any liquidity gaps and profitability gaps that emerge and their duration and then we uh, work with management teams to develop an action plan to bridge that gap uh, and that could include any of those measures of right sizing changing to people structures or incentives or remuneration changes to tax structures as paul highlighted some opportunities there as well as uh, the options to do more formal restructuring or negotiate with landlords, customers and suppliers, and of course, the further use of government schemes. Just in like to touch on those briefly because of the winter statement that we've recently had, uh, the two big things to add to what Paul's already said are probably that uh, Rishi Sunak uh, has extended the government guarantee for B bills and C bills schemes through to 10 years, which will allow banks to look at options to extend the term of those loans from five to 10, which could really help businesses that are having extended short-term cash flow problems, uh, reduce their initial payments when they kick in a year after their loans were taken out. And also obviously the new job support scheme that might be relevant to certain businesses who don't have enough staff to keep who don't have enough work to keep staff fully engaged in the short term and may wish to bring them back part time, um, the government will help fund some of the lost income of those employees together with the employees themselves and the employer. And further details of those is well publicized on our website. Um, so hopefully once we've done the situation analysis and we've taken into account the uh, where the business is and where it's trying to get to and how we're going to get there um, we've got a plan but the plan doesn't the work doesn't stop there uh, the key thing then is to go into monitoring uh, and i recommend that this monitoring becomes a cyclical process uh, looking at it initially every month and uh, hopefully as the business recovers at least every quarter where we're reviewing trading and cash flow against forecast 
where we're looking at macro developments like uh, the Brexit developments that Paul spoke about, uh, where we're looking at progress on the work streams identified in the action plan, and crucially, where we challenge our assumptions that we use in our modeling with real-time data as we get it to decide if our plans need to be revisited and reassessed. Uh, and that may then kick off another round of modeling and action planning and situation analysis if required. Um, because crucially, at a time of fundamental uncertainty like we're in, um, one thing I can guarantee is whatever plans we do to set out now will probably need to be adapted as the situation evolves. So the typical issues that we think about can broadly be categorized into six buckets in a, in a project like this. So there's a financial analysis where we look at essentially all the commercial numbers of the business, thinking as well as about trading and uh, the asset and liability basis of the business. Also things like its working capital requirement, any financial covenants that are in place, uh, and whether there is appropriate um, use of outsourcing where, where, it, where, where we can do that. Uh, also, we look at tax structures, as Paul mentioned and covered. Um, there's a lot that can be done to help cash flow in that um, area. And that is something that we work with our experts in our tax department to identify whether those can help a company get through a turnaround situation. Uh, people. Many businesses' biggest or second or third biggest cost, depending on your industry. Um, so really understanding both the structure you have, the structure you need, and how to go from A to B, while continuing to motivate and incentivize employees to perform at their best, and also to communicate with them so they feel valued and obviously consider any mental health uh, issues during these difficult times. So uh, we work with our HR team of consultants uh, on that front. There are also commercial and operational issues that need to be addressed uh, in most turnaround situations. One of the key things is to worry about the potential for either customer or supplier default. Obviously, if customers default, you could potentially have bad debts. But equally, if suppliers default because they're in difficulty, then you could have impacts where you fail to deliver onwardly to your customers. And Brexit will only make supply chain management more difficult. So um, keeping a real eye on both customer and supplier situations, having alternative suppliers is really key. Um, and again, in housing versus outsourcing, you know, Anything that is less added value in your business that you may wish to consider outsourcing will have the advantage of turning what is probably a fixed cost into a variable cost, which makes changes in demand easier to deal with. Work, we also work closely with our business recovery teams. They can help directors ensure they're meeting any director's fiduciary duties and not exposing themselves to risk at a difficult time when business futures are uncertain. Um, they can also help, uh, if relevant, uh, with more formal processes such as administrations or company voluntary agreements. And finally, our corporate finance team, of which I'm a member, get heavily involved if a plan needs further strategic consideration, whether it be the sale of a non-core subsidiary, whether it be additional debt fundraising or equity fundraising, whether indeed as the recovery kicks in, a business considers making acquisitions of other businesses to help generate synergies on the cost and income side. Or ultimately, if a business owner no longer feels up to the challenge of the turnaround and doesn't want to take that business forward, we can help conduct an accelerated merger and acquisition process to find the business a new home. A couple of recent examples of transactions and projects that we've worked on uh, to give you a flavor of what we can do to support businesses. Um, so we were introduced to a quite a large uh, 30, 40 million turnover food manufacturing business by uh, a funder that had funded a uh, build of a new factory uh, to the tune of about 10 million pounds. Unfortunately, the business had suffered following that uh, 
significant losses and cash flow issues and uh, the bank were concerned about their ability uh, to be repaid so they introduced us we worked with the management team there um, we helped generate some breathing space by uh, identifying surplus assets and stock uh, that was sold to generate cash um, using the breathing space we then conducted an accelerated m a process which realized shareholder value uh, for the shareholders of the business and also um, refinance the debt for the lender so everyone was happy with that outcome um, similarly in the manufacturing business we were introduced to uh, again having uh, severe losses and cash flow issues uh, our situation analysis identified opportunities to renegotiate supplier terms which provided additional financial headroom and uh, cash flow for the business uh, and then ultimately actually the supplier one of the key suppliers uh, agreed to buy that business and uh, put it in a safe home there again generating shareholder value and safeguarding all the employees of that business um, a wholesaling business we worked with recently which had seen their revenue cease as a result of lockdown we helped them either obtain a 1.5 million seedles loan from their bank to provide liquidity funding uh, and the team performed a review of options available and uh, go including government support and help them pull together their business plan and forecasts so uh, we can do everything from sort of complex things to both the more simple helping uh, business owners access the schemes that are out there and then finally a marketing services agency we recently advised had lost significant income probably about 66 percent of fee income uh, due to the covid crisis um, but um, following a detailed review we guided them through a modeling exercise to help them identify uh, excess capacity within their resource uh, our, our HR advisory business helped them then through a process of uh, redundancies uh, as well as we, we uh, assisted them to renegotiate with their landlords undertake a comprehensive cost review and cost cutting exercise on a zero based budgeting approach and they are now back uh, in a profitable situation, um, which is brilliant. Great, thanks, Dan. And um, I hope that was a, a useful uh, run through. Uh, there are uh, contact details there and uh, our, our pictures back on screen. Um, so please get in touch if we can help, uh, but uh, be aware of all the changes that are coming, upcoming, and um, look out to help your customers and uh, thank you for watching thanks for watching everyone